Um, I guess, I mean, do you think that the strip club, like strip clubs sort of can contribute to, so not, you know, it's not that, you know, you're responsible for this per se, but like that this strip you, club. <laughs> you'd be surprised. The, like the existence of strip clubs contribute to a broader misogyny and sort of like a broader acceptance of this idea that women exist for men to use or to, you know, women are just these one dinantial things that exist to titillate. And, and like what you were saying before about compartmentalization is so true. Like, I think that men really, I think that men compartmentalize in a way that women don't. Like, I think that they've, and I think this is mostly socialized, but I, I could be wrong. I'm not an evolutionary biologist, and I know that things are often more complex than just like, it's all culture, it's all socialization. Like, that's not right. true. But I do think that men just, and part of this is just having been in so many relationships with men where I feel like they can shut themselves off in ways that I can't. Like, I think they are able in a lot of ways to view and treat women in a certain way and not think that that has anything to do with how they see women, um, you know, it's like, and I, so I do think that in some ways, this is confusing, but like in some ways men really can love women and men can be like good partners and then they'll turn, they can turn around and like watch pornography and separate that off and be like, oh, but that has nothing to do with my relationship and my partner and how I feel about all these women in my life who I really care right. about. Yeah, but I don't know if they're necessarily right. Um, I think that they try to. Um, and I mean, I, I don't think, think like I don't think compartmentalization is a good thing. Like I think right. I think yeah. that's an unhealthy kind of toxic behavior that a lot of men engage in. I think what and I'm not I'm not trying to excuse it per se. I think it's bad. Sure. It's had harmful impacts on me for sure. Yeah, and it has harmful impacts on women for sure. But I just mean that it's it's one of those things that it's hard. It's been hard for me to articulate. But what I've been trying to say to women is, it's like he's not all bad. Like, yeah, right. that behavior might be bad, but I also know him and it's not like I, you know, I want to, I want to understand what's going on and engage with him as a whole human being. But I know that, you know, he's not all bad. And then that just turns into like, oh, you're just, you're just excusing men and their bad behavior because like, you're like dignitized not or all men. Yeah. Not yeah. all men, not all men. Um, back to what you're saying about the strip club, as far as does it, help to object to absolutely i mean yeah it, we can't get around the fact that it does do that but it's not the reason that men objectify women it's just like a symptom of it you know what i mean it, it exists because men want to see naked beautiful women and they're willing to pay for it um and so that's not going to go away if we just shut all the strip clubs down and we that I guess that's to me is like if we want to stop the objectification of women or why men will pay to see beautiful naked women, well, then you have to get to the root of their sexuality. And that's a lot of it to me is what is going to stop a man from wanting to see beautiful women? What is going to stop a straight man from wanting to go get turned on by women, especially if he you know, you got to face it, but most men don't have access to women in general. You know, like, I, I don't know how to explain it. Like, uh, if they're single, they're not getting a lot of sex. If they're ugly, they're not getting a lot of sex. If they're broke, they're not getting a lot of sex. Like, there's just this large demographic of men that would like to be having a lot more sex than they're having. And so it just opens up this market of, will they have a need to be filled and it's not being satisfied. So how is it going to be satisfied? So right. they're good. They want to view, they want to look at, they want to see boobs, you know? So how do we stop that? Right. And I don't know what the solution is, right? Like I really don't. And I really wish there were a solution. I don't know what it is. Cause I'm like, cause I, <laughs> I get that. Like, it's like, I know, like, it's like, if you're not having sex and you're not having those sexual desires fulfilled and a lot of you know radical feminists would respond and i've responded this way in the past and been like well too bad so too i could bad. have to deal with it right. but like i 
wouldn't want to be in a situation where I didn't, where I wanted to have sex and I didn't have access to sex. Like it's hard. Like that does, it does feel, it's like, you know, I don't. Right. And it's not that I'm sitting here. I'm not advocating for, um, to say that if people want sex, they just have to have it. Right. I know of that course people, not, but it still sucks a lot. And it, and the fact <laughs> remains that we have to address that it is the driving force behind why in a capitalist market, like in the United States, um, strip clubs exist. You know, why, why do, why do I exist? Why does my job exist? It's because men do want this need fulfilled. So how do we come to some kind of agreement where we're like, okay, guys, we know you want to look at women, but these are the women you can look at. The one that has consented. Well, who are they? I've consented because it's my job. I literally take off my clothes for them. Um, maybe their partner consents, but there's this whole group of people that, that I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm articulating this well, but it's, it's the point of, I guess, supply and demand. Like, how are we going to end this problem with patriarchal oppression and men's gaze and this um, objectifying women when no matter, even if we take it all away, men are still going to want to look at women. It's, it's, it's biological. It's part of reproduction. It's part of humanity that men want to engage with women in some way and that's even when i started this i was saying a lot of it is just they're lonely they want to talk so maybe it's not even that they need to have a lap dance they just want someone to sit at their table and have a drink with them and ask them how their day was you know so it, it's 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 complicated as far as i'm concerned and part of why i don't just look at it like oh there's only one answer the answer is just tell men no well, that hasn't ever, it's its not working today. It wasn't working yesterday. It, didn't, it hasn't worked for the last 50 years, my entire life, anything I've read. When does telling men that they can't have access to women or that they shouldn't look at women, when has that actually solved women's problems of being oppressed by men? Do you think, I mean, do you feel as though there is or is ever a power dynamic at play? Like, do you feel like some men go to strip clubs because it makes them feel powerful because those women kind of like have to be nice to them, essentially? Like they have to pretend that they actually find them attractive and interesting, even though they clearly don't? Hell, hell no, I'm not nice to them. There's some people I'm <laughs> flat out mean to. Uh, if a guy thinks that he's going to go to a strip club and just automatically everybody's going to be nice to him, he's got another thing coming. Um, no, I don't know. I'm being a little bit facetious, but at the same time, I'm, I'm being honest. No, it's not just necessarily a power theme because it can go both ways. It can absolutely, not every man is into the same thing. Not every man wants to go to the strip club and be treated nicely, you know, or in a situation where they have a power over a woman. But from a radical push, feminist perspective, they're going to say, well, the men always have the power. They're in the position of power. They're the ones paying for the sex, for the interaction, uh, whatever you may say, whatever you may, may be going on. Um, but... It, it, it's not always like that when you're talking about sexual fantasies. If you're talking about power in society versus submissive, dominant, who is doing what, who's exchanging the money, because that's the other part is that you're talking about two different class systems too. You're not just talking about male, female, you're talking about rich, poor, who is taking the money, who is getting the money. And a lot of the times it, the guys going in the club don't, aren't, they don't have money. They're spending their last dollar, you know, and they're going to leave broke. They're not in a position of power in every way, right? In every intersectional way. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I on, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I honestly think that men who go to strip clubs are kind of pathetic. Like, I've always just thought of them as kind of stupid. Like, it's like. <laughs> Cause it's like, what are you doing? Like you're going to this, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not obviously entirely right, but I'm like, 
you're going here so that the, these women have to pay attention to you because they're trying to get your money. I don't mean right. have to, but they're going to pay attention to you mm -hmm. and like suck up to you to try to get your money. And you like think that's real. Like you're, you're right. an idiot. Like Plenty of you're them so do. stupid. Like you actually think that these women want you. Like, right. totally. and they don't, and they don't respect you. Totally. All of that's true. All of that's true. And that's why I'm saying there's like a lot of different dynamics going on at once. And I think that, you know, anybody that doesn't want to work there definitely shouldn't be worked there. I think women that are forced to work there because of financial, um, you know, they're being pimped or they are on drugs or they're desperate, like they would rather work a different job, but they can't. So this is the job they have to work. Like none of those women, they, none of those women should be there. Mm -hmm. you no. Know? And I think that that is a, a huge, the first problem is no women that don't want to be there should be there. Instead right. and, of but how do we resolve that? Like, how do we get, cause that, yeah, that, it would be great if like the porn industry and process, I mean, in my ideal world, there wouldn't be, prostitution and there wouldn't right. be a porn industry and there wouldn't be strip clubs everywhere like i but but it's we're we're operating in the real world so right. this is what we're working with right but like you know so so within the situation the ideal situation would be that everyone was there actually by choice right um and not because they were being trafficked or pimped or exploited or abused or you know so many of those the women in the porn industry have like major mental totally. health issues and addiction issues and you know it's not it's not this thing where you can say oh yeah just because they agreed they're consenting it's like well no they're sort of like in a desperate situation they're obviously being predated exactly. on but like i don't like how do we get to that point <laughs> I mean, that's, I honestly, I have no idea. I don't have any of those answers as far as, that's why, I, one of the reasons I ask questions a lot because I'm like, well, what is, you're mad at me. You're mad at me because I work here. Well, what, what's the solution? How, if I decide, if I quit tomorrow and I never go back and I never work there, I never talk about it again, is the problem solved? <laughs> it's not, right? And so that's kind of where I take it personally. Like you're, and I say you, you know, the general you, people get radical feminists get very upset with me because of decisions I choose to make. But I'm like, but if I stop tomorrow, that's not going to solve the problem. It's still going to be there. There's still going to be strip clubs in every major city. There's still going to be prostitution. There's still going to be men buying foot pictures and only fans and pros like it's everywhere. And I go back to men, men have to be the ones that stop it. It can't, why is it on women's responsibility, once again, to control men and their sex drive and their demand for women? We can't, we can't control that. Right. And I think, I mean, that's kind of what Richie Hardcore was saying. He's like, men have to be like accountable for the choices that they're making and mm -hmm. start thinking more critically about the kind of porn that they're consuming and try sure. to make more ethical choices around that. Like if you're going to consume pornography, like are you consuming pornography where you know that these people are there because they want to be there and that you're not consuming pornography that's harming you, harming your relationship, like harming your sex life because maybe you're you're consuming stuff that's like violent or stuff mm. that's like sexualizing, you know, rape or like, you know, that's not this like super degrading misogynist stuff that's gonna kind of rewire your brain to be turned on by pretty awful things. Um, you know, men do have a responsibility to do that. And and I just, I don't know that that's, that sort of realization is gonna come from radical feminists telling them that they're horrible misogynists. 